Get ready to embark on an incredible journey of success and inspiration. Introducing the affiliate marketing millionaire extraordinaire, the trailblazer who's transforming lives one mind, one heart at a time. Our brother from another mother, the myth, the legend himself, Junior Anthony. Anyways, guys, how are you guys feeling today? Type it in the chat. How are you guys feeling? Great. Fabulous. Like a million bucks. Like a million bucks. Sounds awesome. So I see excited, free, wonderful, and zing. All these amazing, awesome people. I love it. Perfect. Avelina, it's been such a long time, sweetheart. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm always here, but I just, just have my camera off. So good to see you, too. My baby girl just said hi. Hey, sweetie, what's going on? So cool, guys. I just came back from Boise. I was with Russell Brunson and talking about a whole bunch of things. It was so exciting. And while I was out there, something happened. Something that happened that, that made me remember this one situation in my life. So I want to ask you guys, would you rather be right or would you rather be rich? I've been in a chat. Do you rather be right or do you rather be rich? It's okay. All right. A lot of people, right? See, there's a lot of people that would rather be right. Just like I used to be, right? I would rather be right. Type in a chat. Do you rather be right or do you rather be rich? Cornelius, you seem confused. I see my brother scratching his head. He's listen, this is a hard question. I can't like be right, but I need some money in my bank account. What's going on? Which one do I choose? I definitely get it, right? And the reality is you cannot be both. You cannot be both. You could either be right or you can be rich, all right? Now, this is a really important question. I think most people actually need to have an answer to before they even start any type of journey, whether it's with me or whether it's online, whatever it is that you're trying to seek, I think you should ask that question, especially if finances is something that you're interested in. Would you rather be right or do you rather be rich? See, I remember not too long ago, by the way, I was driving in my Uber, just as regular, driving down the road, picking up passengers, Uber, Lyft, any which one. Gave me the passenger first because I just needed the money. I had a lot of bad habits. I had a horrible weed habit, actually. And all the money I was going to make from driving Uber, I was going to probably spend it on more weed. I remember this one time. I was driving down Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. If you guys are from New York, you guys already know Atlantic Avenue. It's by the Barclays Stadium, all that other junk. So I pick up this guy and I'm driving down Atlantic Avenue to his destination. And we're talking, nothing crazy. At the time, I wasn't making music. So I'm just like, every passenger that hops in my car, you have to listen to my music. Like, that is what you have to do for the next 10, 20 minutes. However long your ride is, you are listening to my music. Fuck your music. I don't care about what station you want to listen to. You are not getting the ox. I am playing my music for you. And that's what you're being doing. So that was my entire thing. This guy hopped in the car. We're driving him again pitching him to play my music and this guy's not jacking it i'm like i don't really like this guy he's a douchebag dude listen to my music shit but he never did in fact when i got to his destination he actually thanked me for the ride and i'm like oh this is a nice house which is a big building oh yeah I, I i own it i've owned it for about five years now huh this guy looks just like me i'm sorry i, I i'm not gonna sit down and lie to you guys at that time I didn't think people that looked like me could own buildings. Like not to sound racist or crazy, that, that sounded like some Jewish shit. Like only Jewish people own buildings from where I grew up, from where I knew. So like, or, or it's Jewish, so she should own a building, right? That's my thinking. Bro, you're not black. Like you look black, you look like me, but there's no way that you own this building. Yeah, man, I bought this five years ago. How did you do that? How, how are you able to buy a building? He goes, honestly, I'll actually show you. And I'll help you. Would you like to own something like this? I said, yeah. Oh, guys, type in the chat if you would want to own a building someday. This was like, it wasn't something spectacular. It was probably like a 10 to 14 unit building. I like, it was like five stories tall. Like, it, it was like an actual building. And I'm like, there's no way this black guy owns this shit. I see a lot of heck yes, yeses. Yes, of course. So he said, I'll help you. I'll help you. I want to help you. But you need to do three things first. You need to do three things before I can help you. Can you ask me one of the Think and Grow widgets? I don't mind. I think it's in the library upstairs. Uh, actually, no, I got it. Got it, sweetie. Find 
listen, this is how you know you got a lot of books and I can come right here in one of my libraries and just pull some random shit out and I got everything that I'm talking about. It's this craziness. So the, I, I couldn't. So this guy says, if you want me to help you, you need to do three things for me. Now at that time, I'm from like the bad side of the neighborhood. So when someone tells you to do something for them, like you have to do three things for them. Like the last person, I'll be completely brutally honest with you guys. The last time someone told me, hey, if I do something for them, they're going to help me get a MacBook Pro. I found myself in Albany learning how to cook crack. So I wasn't too, I wasn't too eager of I'm trying to help random people in the street. What are you going to let me do now? <laughs> I don't know. Right. And he was just like, I want you to read these three books. I'm like, you want me to read? You know what came to my mind? A lot of people don't read. I ain't reading shit. I ain't reading nothing. I already know it all. Just teach me the shit so I can go do it. Guys, how many guys can relate to that? Wriggle your hands. Come on. I ain't reading shit. Fuck you, man. Just give me the information. I want it. You said you can help me. Help me. So I'm like, fuck. What are you, a freaking kumbaya? I'm not reading nothing. I'm pretty finished high school. I dropped out of college, bro. I ain't doing none of that. Regardless, I wrote down the list of the books that he recommended for me. The first book was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I want every one of you guys to write it down. If you guys haven't already, read it. This is what has helped me change my life. The second book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. We actually have a really close relationship with the president of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. He actually came, spoke at our event last year. Perhaps I may bring him this year. Who knows? Wait. Now, the third book is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic that how many years ago I laughed at that guy? I'm not reading shit, man. To now being able to look, I, I swear, like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, I thought I didn't have one of the books. I was about to send at least upstairs. But guys, I literally turned around and those books were all here. Different parts of my library, of course, but they're all here. And these books, I promise you, I've never read a page in this book. That means I already had, I already read this book. This is a brand new book. You know, when you read a book, it'll open. This book ain't open. Never read this book neither. Again, this book ain't open. This book I have, I think I've read, probably read from this book once. And as you can see, it's, it has the, like the, the page openings. But at the time, I didn't have money. And he told me I didn't have time to have money. I didn't have money. I did have money. I was smoking my money on weed. But I didn't have time to go buy a book. How many of you guys feel like, why the hell would I buy a book? We wear hands. Be honest. Come on. Why the hell would I buy a book? See, that is the issue. You'd rather be right than you'd rather be rich. You say that you want to be rich. The answer to every one of your problems are already in a book. But you rather be correct about your standpoint on who you believe you are. You believe that you know everything. You believe that you're a complete person. You believe that you have everything figured out. And I agree, you are absolutely correct. You do have things figured out. But maybe perhaps are those things that you have figured out, is it going to help you get to that level that you want to go? Only you can answer that. I can't for you. So going back to my statement, you could either A, be right, or you can be rich. At that time, when I was younger, I'd rather be right. Screw this shit. I don't need to read no fucking book. You're either going to teach me or you're not going to teach me. It's as it is. I already understand you people get rich and then you guys don't want to help any other poor people. I get it. I get it. I understand. How many of you guys feel that way too? When people get rich, they don't want to help poor people. They, they're just like douche. But how many of you guys feel that way too? Come on, put your hands. Again, you can either be rich or you could be right. Choose one. At a point in time in my life, I thought so too. I thought rich people never help poor people. But I realized that it's not that rich people never help. Poor people just don't help themselves. Poor people just don't help themselves. There's a difference between being poor and being broke. It's a huge difference. Poor people do not help themselves. They're waiting for handouts and they're always going to be waiting. See, at the moment, that time in my life, I was waiting for a handout. Yeah, I'm not going to read this fucking book. But guess what? You're going to have to give me the information because I, I want it. You're rich. You already made it. Give me the information. Tell me what I got to do. That's it. What I didn't want to do was the training that it took or the training necessary for me to be an optimal human being for me to actually make the things happen. See, each of these books, I've learned really amazing, life-changing things that now that I'm looking back at it, I can see exactly why he wanted me to read these books before I even got into any situation with him for him to help me make something out of myself. But again, at that time, I wanted to be right. So much ego. I'm young. I'm an asshole. Egotistical. Ah, 
gosh, but that's all part of growing up. Of course, eventually over time, I lost the paper that I wrote those titles of the books. I lost that paper. And in my head, I've always, like a year or two years past, I've always thought back at that moment, wow, maybe what if that was my one opportunity to change my life? And I dropped it because I wanted to be egotistical or I didn't want to read or what if this was my opportunity to be better and be good? But I didn't, something came to my mind. I had a problem. My problem wasn't that I didn't have any money. That wasn't the problem. See, I had to accurately diagnose the problem to get to the root cause. And that's what most people aren't doing. So I want to give you guys an example. If I have a cavity, all right, let's say I have a cavity or root canal or whatever. I don't, I'm not a dentist or orthodontist or whatever, so I don't know. But let's just say I have a cavity. Is my problem, and I have a cavity and I have a toothache. So the, the, the problem here is, is my teeth are hurting. I have a toothache. Naturally, guess what I'm going to want to do? Go to the dentist and have them fill in my cavity, correct? How many of you guys, naturally, that's what I would do. Type in the chat, yes, naturally, yes. That's what I would do. See a dentist, yes, naturally. But, and this is what I'm saying, accurately diagnose the problem to get to the root cause. The root cause isn't the cavity. My headache, although, yes, I have a headache because of the cavity or a toothache or whatever, yes. But the root cause of the problem is my diet or my hygiene. And I wouldn't even say hygiene. I would say diets. Does that make sense? Back to the story. I sat down and I had to actually diagnose the root cause of all of my problems. And I realized that I was the root cause of my problems. My ignorance, my, my ego, my need of being right all the time. That was the root cause of my suffering. And it was like a light bulb moment, the moment that I figured that out. And I went on a, a rampage trying to figure out these books because I, I, for this one moment in my life, I realized that I actually had clarity, understanding. I need to go find these things that this guy said that I need because there's something in there. And randomly, just randomly, I found Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Randomly. I don't even know how I did it, but I found the book literally. You guys ever heard of the saying, when the student is ready, the master would appear? So it's literally one of those situations. I have no idea how I found the book, but the book literally fell on my lap. Holy shit. Do you think at that time, it was like a year or two years after of me literally struggling. Do you think I procrastinated on getting the book? Yes or no? No. See, I went through pain. And this is one of the biggest things that I preach to you guys because I had to really go through the pain. Satori means growing through insight versus growing through pain. So the moment that book fell back into my lap, I didn't write it down. I didn't do anything. I instantaneously went to figure out how I can get the book because I didn't have money. I didn't have any money. Hey, guys, let's stop the recording right here. I had to illegally download the book because I didn't have no money. I needed to read the book. So I illegally downloaded the book. And then I, I realized the big message this guy was trying to, to show me, but I was just so stuck in being right about who I believed I was. And I wasn't willing to allow myself to be rich. It's crazy. After I read that book, funny story, I was actually able to purchase a second book. So this is a book that I actually purchased when I was damn near homeless. This one I read a lot of times. And then I was able to buy a couple of them. All right. And then I was able to find Think and Grow Rich. I don't know how that one fell in my lap, but I was able to find Think and Grow Rich. And then sooner or later, the final book of the puzzle fell in my lap, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And armed with the knowledge of these three books, I feel like it gave me the ability to actually understand everything that he was trying to teach me. See, I thought making money was about what I had to do to make money. I thought making money was just a physical thing, but in reality, money is spiritual. And most people don't understand that. There's a reason why my Monday classes aren't about skills, right? We do those things on Wednesday classes, but there's a reason why my Monday classes aren't about skills. It's about mindset because without the right mindset, you won't be able to accomplish anything regardless. And that's what I was missing. And that's why that guy, that mysterious guy, he didn't have me buy any of these books. He didn't have me buy any of these books, whether it's, multi-family acquisition or commercial real estate investing or how to create wealth real estate investing or 
seven figure flipping underground or best best ever apartment syndication book or crushing it in apartments and real estate or the multifamily millionaire. He didn't tell me to get any of these books. Yeah, I, I do have a real estate section in my library. That's my purpose. Yeah, he didn't tell me to get any of those books. He gave me the books that would fix my state of mind because he understood where I was coming from, the struggles that I had, my environment. And it's the thing that I, I want to preach to you guys. Do you rather be right or do you rather be rich? Because most of us, we want to be right. Most of us sit down and say, I don't need mindset. How many of you guys believe you don't need mindset? Come on, be, be honest. I get this shit every fucking week. How many of you guys, I got a therapist already. I don't need no mindset. I need you to show me how to make money. How many of you guys are like, okay, I see no one want to move their hands, right? Do you rather be right or do you rather be rich? Do you rather be right or do you rather be rich? Because you could be right. Yeah, you're right. You don't need mindset. There's a really good book that I have. And I want you to read, I want to read this little paragraph for you guys. It's really interesting. Okay, if I can find it. Okay, it's, it's wrong to be right. Being right is based upon knowledge and experience and is often provable. Knowledge comes from the past, so it's safe. It is also out of date. It is the opposite of originality. Experience is built from solutions to all the situations and problems. The old situations are probably different from the present ones. So that old solution will have to be bent to fit new problems and possibly be a bad fit. So the likelihood is that if, you're, if you've got the experience, you'll probably use it. And this is laziness. Experience is the opposite of being created. If you can prove that you're right, you're set in concrete. You cannot move with the times or with other people. Being right is also being boring. Your mind is closed. You are not open to new ideas. You are rooted in your own rightness, which is arrogance. Arrogance is a valuable tool, but only if used very sparingly. Worst of all, being right has a tone of morality about it. To be anything else sounds weak or fallible, and people who are right would hate to be thought as fallible. So it's wrong to be right. Because people who are right are rooted in the past, rigid-minded, dull, and smug, and there's no talking to them. If you're someone that's always choosing to be right, all you're going to have is more of what you've had in your past. Is there any one of us that wants to have more of what we had in our past? Right, I'm hoping everyone's not. Nope. I want the future, baby. I want whatever future I'm desiring is what I want. I don't want any of my results from the past. I want to create new things and better things. I was just speaking about trying about um, doing something crazy and new and like completely like disregarding everything that I've built up so far. Like it's scary stepping into the unknown. It is. Again, you'd rather be right or do you rather be rich? And that is my statement to you guys. What I want you guys to do tonight is I want you guys to go into Monday class discussions inside of your circle community, your Satorian circle community. And I want you to pick a goal that you want to achieve in the next six months, by the end of this year, what is that goal? What is that goal? Like, what is that goal that you want? And then what I want you to do is I want you to analyze your behavior. Are you focusing on being right? Or are you focusing on being rich? Focus on being right. I'll give you guys exactly what it's going to look like. I already know how to do this. I already know this is what's going to work, or that's not going to work. Focusing on being rich is, I don't know. I'm just going to try it. And if it works out, great. If it doesn't, well, great. Anyways, I want you to do that in your circle community, guys, tonight. Whatever your goal is or rich, you make your choice and put whatever you want to put there. Please make it for something that other people can learn from so that the community can expand and grow from group economics. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys' time. Martin, I need to read those books. One thing I will highly recommend. So you see, I do have a lot of books, right? And this is from, oh, actually the owner of this book, the owner of this book, actually, a great friend of mine's, by the way, he flies planes and shit. Yeah. Anyways, he said the worst thing that people could ever do is read a bunch of books. So I'm just going to throw that out for you. The three books, if you had to read, would be these three books and that's it. Uh, you don't need to read a bunch of books. How to win friends and influence people, think and grow rich, and which that product. Three books, and that's it. Now, I'll explain to you why I was told not to read so many books is because you have 
analysis paralysis. You know what happens when you have too much information in your brain? What happens? I'm going to chat. When you have so much information in your brain, what tends to happen? You get stuck. You shut down. You overload. You're like a computer and you do nothing with the information. That's not how you read. If you ever get a book, it's to solve a problem that you're having. For instance, all of these real estate books, I've never read them. I know that in the future, I want to do commercial real estate, but right now I'm not interested in that. So I'm not going to sit down and read these books. Does that make sense? I just got a few books today, right? I got one, two, three. I got books in the mail today. I got these five books in the mail today. I think it's these five and that's it, right? Yeah, I don't think I put anything else over there. So I got those five books in the mail today, right? But I'm not reading them right now, right? This one... The Changing World Order, I think it's a great book to read, but it's not solving. It's a great thing for me to, okay, if I ever bump it, okay, I think I'm moving too fast. But when I see books, so I think in the future, does that make sense? I don't think right now. I think about problems that I may have in the future. Does that make sense? But that's just, yeah. But that's me, right? A lot of you guys, if you do that, you get anxiety. How many of you guys get anxiety thinking about the future? So then don't do this, all right? But for me... I found, I find I'm okay with past. I'm okay with present. I'm okay with future. I don't have anxiety. I, I don't suffer from that. I probably smoked way too much weed when I was younger. I don't know. But what I do is, okay, I, I may find interest in this probably in the next three years, or I may need this thing in the next four or five years. So what I would do is I'll just buy the book now. So then when the problem arises, I can always go to that book, find a solution, close the book and put the book away. Does that make sense? So again, this author, he said that, and he, this guy makes $25 million a year. Blows me, makes me look like a pebble. But um, he says, bro, there's only, I think he said five or 10 books that he reads. No, I, I think he said one. One? Yeah, one that he reads all the time. Well, okay, so Evelise just corrected me. Evelise said that it's only one book that he reads, all, he reads all the time. Everything else, every other book that he gets, it's just for problem solving. Does that make sense? All right. So I don't want you guys to say, oh, Junior has a lot of books. Let me go read a bunch of them. No, I don't read all these books. I have them. I'm not reading all of these books. That's fucking confusion. That's a clutter mess. I don't want that. I wouldn't want you guys to, to, to do that either. Unless you guys want to, then that's on you. But for me, I, I have these books for problems that I may or may not experience in the future. And that's it. I don't read these books. There's a few books that I do read. I read about three, four, five different books. I'll keep repeating the same books over and over, but that's about it. Anyways, guys, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate you guys being here. And the Melanie that won the giveaway. Hunger. Mel Hunger. Melanie, you hungry? Mm -hmm. Why is your last name Hunger? It's my married name. Ask my mother, Junior. Ask my it's mom. A married name. That's her husband. Oh, okay. we'll see her. Be like, ask my mom-in-law, Junior. Ask my mom-in-law. My my maiden name isn't as good too, because that's Turner. It's what? Turner. Turner's my oh, maiden. Turner. Name. What's wrong with Turner? I know a Turner. I don't like that either. I like Turners. They turn a lot. No, do you have a Venmo? Yes, I do. All right, type your Venmo in the chat for me, please. Recording Guys, Melanie Hunger won a, a giveaway from us a few a few weeks ago or a month ago or some shit like that. Okay. She's about to make some money. Melanie, you got your phone on you? I do. Is it LV or IV? It's LV. Love my boys. How many boys you got? I have two. 15 and 8. Aww. Who's the other one? I don't know who the other one is. Perfect. Melanie, check your phone. I got it. Thank you. Come on, show show it to us. Congratulations, Melanie. Thank you. Congratulations. I'll listen. I'll follow the instructions better next time. Right, that's so cool. Thank so cool. You. Congratulations. Um, and thank you for participating as well. You're like brand new when you participated. So that's so I was. Cool. I was. Thank you. Awesome. $6,000 tonight. Wasn't this amazing Monday? <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for your time again. I'll see you guys later. All right.